in real time. So uh, we are really um, proud to have Dr. Tarif today. Uh, he's a very experienced person. He was uh, one of our uh, ex staff, um, and, and we, we pro proud of that as well. So uh, a, a bit of background of Dr. Tarif. So he is currently the assistant professor of practice in the uh, School of Architecture, Prairie View A&M, University of Texas in the United States. And um, he received his early education from the Bangladesh University of Engineering and Technology for his uh, Bachelor, of Arch, uh, Bachelor of Architecture and Catholic University uh, Leuven in Belgium, if I mentioned it correctly, yes, uh, for his master. Uh, sorry again? It's a Dutch word. It's usually the Catholic University. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, and he received his PhD from the University of Hong Kong uh, back in 2008. So if you look at his uh, areas of uh, expertise, uh, will be much on um, uh, housing, urban design, uh, design studio pedagogy, and uh, is it morality? Is it ar or architectural morality? Or and his uh, recent book was in 2015 on retrofitting uh, back lanes, a study on Malaysian terrace row housing estates, um, uh, published by Lambert Academic Publishing in Germany. All right. So um, I think you can uh, look uh, uh, into his publication where he has a lot of uh, publications, 62 of them, uh, and 30 of uh, peer reviewed conference papers. Um, yeah, I think uh, I may have introduced you uh, a little bit of that. Uh, uh, um, uh, a little bit on, on, on protocol as well. So uh, if you have any questions, you can always put them in chat session. Uh, you can always open up, uh, you can also open up your uh, mic. At the end of the session, there will be Q&A for a few minutes. Uh, if you want to ask a question, please do so. I will encourage my students to ask a lot of questions uh, because uh, this is kind of interesting and um, is something that is uh, close to us as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, without further ado, uh, may I uh, pass the floor to you, Dr. Tarif? All right. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. All right. So, just that, thank you very much, Dr. Fat and Dr. Ayman, for arranging this. In fact, I'm very happy to reconnect with the UTM uh, staff and the students. Uh, I worked in UTM from 2018 until 20. Uh, 2010 until 2018, and really big, significant part of my teaching career. So I'm really thankful for the for, my, for the opportunity that you gave, Dr. Mahmoud. Salam alaikum. Uh, alaikum salam, Dr. Tarif. Welcome to you. Welcome back to UTM. <laughs> Thank you. I am always happy when I have a chance to join anything in UTM. And since now the COVID has uh, let us to connect in in your online. So this is a really good thing. I mean, just Dr. Iman was saying in disguise. So this is a good. Ch I, I remember that when we, like, let's say when you're in our childhood, we had this kind of telephones, you know, how to dial them one, two, and three, and then have to call them. This, these today's children, they don't know anything about it. So when I talk to them, I say that, well, we have to wait for the dial tone and then we have to ring them. And then at the time I, I dreamed, I dreamt about like, can we have a, this kind of phone that we can see the face of the other side? And that was like a dream. And if we had that chance that we had a kind of TV and the telephone together, and now it's everywhere. Like the, any, any, any watch, any mobile cell phones, you have the, you have the face, uh, <laughs> you can see the face and now, the online video sharing is really amazing. If you, if we just go back 30 years ago, I couldn't have believed that we are doing this stuff. So this is really interesting uh, to have this kind of conference. So yeah, I really appreciate UTM to arrange uh, this thing and inviting me to uh, have this seminar. So thank you very much. So uh, if you uh, if you allow me, I can just start sharing the screen. So alaikum, Dr. Fawaz, Dr. Fawaz. Hello, my friend, big brother, how are you? You're muted, Dr. Powers, you have to unmute first. Yes, oh, okay. good to see you. 
Can you hear me? Yes, you can. I was asking you, how's your album getting on? <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm focusing on instrumental. Oh, cool. You're going to play sitar, is it? Yes, yes. I'll, I'll tell you more about that later after the session. Okay, so thank you. You see that there are a lot of old friends and probably, I don't know whether, but maybe some of the students, if they are in third year, they might know me because I was there until 2018. But the first year and the second year students may not uh, like be familiar with with me, but I, I've had a lot of students, especially in the starting, I started with the third year studio, then moved to the master studio. And for a small little while, there was a three plus two system. I went back to the third year and actually went to 15 onwards, focused on the master studio. And now this in when I moved to the United States and I joined the Texas Fairview NMC University, I started with the third year studio as well. But uh, there's an influx of first year students this year, so they needed more lecturers in the first year studio. I moved to the first year second semester studio this semester and. Really happy to to see the youngsters. The first year studio is kind of a fresh influx. A lot of things happen in the first year. You all know that. Of course, design is the pri primary um, uh, uh, primary objective, but also we have to talk about a lot of things uh, about life, about philosophy, a lot of things. And then came the COVID, and we moved from uh, the the physical environment to the virtual environment and it's really changed the whole complexity of the situation so this is a really i don't know there could be positives there could be negatives the positives is that we are kind of connecting each part every part of the world at the same time this is amazing but in, in negativity if somebody says that well we don't and meet in private i mean person so with the in architecture we have a lot of hands-on uh, things like making the models, showing the drawings. So this is very a lot of things that is really likely to suffer. But we are trying to adapt. That's the basic thing. So when this uh, semester, the uh, our dean uh, introduced us uh, with the students, and most of the studios they thought that it would be uh, it would be um, it's useful if we can relate the projects with the pandemic. Uh, because pandemic is, is real and it's it's happening and everybody needs to see it from a different perspective and architecture is different from anything else especially uh, if we look at the interactions because architecture we talk all uh, a lot of about interaction interactive spaces where people can interact and then we suddenly find that interaction is the bad thing so that is a very difficult to digest for people who uh, who, who we so we we are brought up in a way that interaction meaning good and interaction means that we can exchange ideas physically in person then we have to use those kind of uh, social distancing and then a lot of regulations so sometimes we we try to defy and we try to uh, try to not to respond to basic common sense that this is a virus and the flu and and we have to be careful so uh, we thought that the pen, uh, the response uh, response to the pandemic would be a good good thing to introduce into the studio. So if if some of you, uh, I'm not sure whether anybody is from the first or second year studio, but I know that Dr. Fawaz is here, so he most likely he knows that his first year first semester studios are doing uh, some of the basic uh, art related projects and probably one or two functional projects. In the second semester, we do some functional projects, so. Uh, in there are three different um, uh, projects in the three and a half uh, months long semester. So the first one is that um, uh, design. I mean the research on a monument, like a uh, monument means a sculptures building, and usually we study and design and put an assignment on the uh, landscape, and that's that's called we call the two D design. And then we move to uh, a research on uh, sacred space, which is like a temple, any religion, and then we ask them to design design a small part of that uh, that temple or that uh, that chapel. And then at the third project is the basic whole complete complete design project of a sacred space, which would have a monumental 
effect. So combining the knowledges together from the first two semesters, first two projects to make it a, a, a bigger one. So gradually they build up from 2D to 3D and then overall complexity of the of the requirements of a, a functional monofunctional uh, activity. So uh, if, today I'll just give you uh, some quick, uh, they're still doing the third one, they're still designing uh, the sacred space design, so I don't have them in hand, but I have the first two, the assignment one that means designing the landscapes, and then the second one is that designing the small part of a temple. So I will show this one and how they are trying to respond to the pandemic. So first of all, I like to uh, give you, I mean, most of you already know what the, the seriousness of this uh, pandemic. And then if you see the red spots around the world, you see that not a single place in the world that has been not that, that has not been affected by this pandemic. So this is really uh, something that I never saw in my generation. Even my parents' generation, they can see it's once in a century kind of stuff. So this is totally new, and and of course, if something is new, there will be always be uh, two kind of reactions. One is that the first one they will go for it and and try to uh, take measures to protect it. Another is go to defy them and think that okay, now this is not real. Everything is wrong, so we just go ahead and whatever we are doing, we have to continue. We don't have to. We don't want to de get defeated. So this this thing happened in in most part of the most part of the, parts of the world. And the United States is not a, a, an exception. And there were one groups that, that they might think that, okay, wearing a mask is a kind of expression of weakness. I'm not weak, so why should I wear a mask? I am defiant to the immune to the, the virus. So they, they move around without masks. And then there are other people, other group of people who are very cautious and more sensible. And they, they put the masks on and maintain the social distancing. And then gradually, while we are knowing, getting know, getting to know better about the pandemic, about the virus, so probably in in kind of few months or even a year, we might be able to understand how we can protect ourselves from this virus. So so far, we don't have any kind of uh, medicine that can cure cure immediately the virus, or we don't have the vaccine. So we have to take the precautions. So what the precautions basically uh, they, they introduce is basically the first one is the social distancing. So social distancing also this has different standards. I just I just asked Dr. Ayman and Dr. Fad that what is the distancing in Malaysia? It is like one meter or three feet. The United States is two meters or three feet. That means if you are going outdoor or inside a public space. You have to maintain a six feet distance from the other group. Like let's say it's a family, then the other family from the other family. If you're in a group, then one group to an, with another. And then also, if the group doesn't contain uh, members of the family, the police can come and ask to check the ID whether they are from the same family or not. If not, they find them. So these kind of things they are trying. And also in the supermarkets or in in the superstores, uh, there are some spots on the on the on the trade on the, the cash the counters so that people can maintain that six feet difference so this is one major major method another of course is the mask so if you wear mask they say doctors say that you the the the, the probability of uh, getting infected reduced to 70 percent so why should not we do that it's very simple just wear the mask surgical mask is the first choice and you can have double layer or um, like two masks or something to protect yourself that increases the so that it's not about just about myself it's about the others that means even as because sometimes it's asymptomatic so that means i do not may not know that if i'm affected but i can still uh, infect somebody else so the masks not only saves myself but also saves others so if we are like sensible we think about others it is easy to just maintain this protocol and just have it wear a mask. So mask and social distancing is the first basic two things that we do do need to follow in case we need to um, uh, help not to spread. I mean, reduce the spread of the of the virus. So you can see that the norms have changed. So this kind of situation is not unfamiliar. I mean, you you may not have thought about this kind of seating arrangement just 12 months ago. Never. We never thought about this. And oh, why these people are so separated? There are like the stadiums, the football matches, 
and then we have the, the concerts, and then we have people side by side, and that is now not even thinkable, like we can unthinkable situation. So at that point, we would say we might say we might have said that wow, why why will we see that it's like not good for economy? You don't sell that many tickets. We don't sell that many uh, like benefit like profit making things. Now it's changed. So for the uh, what we feel is that for the interior is easier because you can easily mark them and like this is a basketball court and then we have put the, some circles which makes a six feet. Uh, center to center distance from each one and each got a boundary uh, so that you, we do not go beyond uh, beyond this uh, circle that we move we you should not once it is station once we the, the program the function the, the activity started we should not move around these spots so what we find is that we we identified that there must be a station a station the circles of the stations so where we should be stationed means we have to be uh, static uh, when we are observing something or uptaking or participating in some activity. So this is what we call the stations. And then uh, if we are uh, like look carefully, there are some other uh, other areas. For example, this this is a kind of transition. We say that okay, somebody's here and there is another space, empty space. So we can move to this. We have to go through a transition. Now, let's say I'm just uh, assuming that these two guys, uh, these two persons are here and there is a spot here. Now, suddenly somebody says, can you come here to take these spaces? These two together started to uh, to go to that spot. Then they are in a confusion because the six feet distance, sometimes we might not be able to follow. So there's a kind of confusion. So that's why we thought that they, it would be nice if you can identify a no man's land in between. For example, if we put another circle in between and it said that that's a no man's land. So when we ask these two guys to come here, they will not directly go, but they will follow this, this met, this path. This will, this, this one will follow that path. So this kind of terms are now new. We are trying to introduce every country has a different ways to do that. But we are, we are thinking uh, in terms of like context, uh, context specific uh, methods to to take care of these kind of uh, pandemic situations. So in indoors, it's easier because you can we can mark it down. But in outdoor, it's not that easy. Even though we we put a lot of signs like distancing in between two non-related families and two non-related persons. And this is a six meter, six feet, two meter in the United States. So we can put that one, but we can't control. And if we have a kind of uh, situation where two persons are coming opposite from each other directions, that it's just our common sense and our sense of responsibility that we maintain that kind of six feet. I saw many, many people uh, like in the park uh, or in the in the in the urban in, in the urban uh, landscape and uh, uh, park like the urban uh, open spaces, as there are some people who are not really that kind of sense sensibly responsibility responsibility for they just come close to other people and they think that that is not uh, I mean there's kind of weakness if we just stay away from others so it's kind of showing weaknesses. So it's not about that. It's, it's about uh, responsibility to others. So uh, sometimes in outdoors, we also need to have this kind of uh, markings that we usually can have in the indoors. So that was one of the one of the ideas about this first project. So we selected monuments as the as the as a as a case. So we selected a lot of monuments that I we asked them I asked them to select a monument and then look at the public space that around the monument. So uh, let's say I'll just give you a brief idea. Let's say this is a monument and this is the landscape. So they could they can propose something on the landscape in terms of 2D and they, they can go for the whole site or they can choose the particular area where the, the people are most likely to be gathering in, in, in terms of density. So they can choose between everything. So you can see that the, the layer is all, always, or not always, in most of the cases in, in a prominent landscape uh, monument, they have their own landscapes, but that was prior to the 
pandemic. That means these are not designed according to the uh, pandemic regulations. So this might not satisfy uh, the social distancing that we need right now. So that means we need to do something, uh, even though it's temporary, like we can stay for two or three weeks, uh, two or three years, and uh, still, we have to do something and maybe later on when the COVID disappears, I mean, sometimes they say that this term, I don't know if that term is very uh, helpful. But let's say we can control the COVID in terms in, in, in future years. We can also take out this kind of uh, situation like the landscape and come back, go back to the original one. And so, uh, for example, if you take a look at this, uh, this monument and you see that the people are moving around and you can see that this, there's not that much people, like maybe scattered, uh, they're already, even though it's not a pandemic situation photograph, but you can see that they are maintaining some distance. This is a kind of social norm that we don't go too close to unknown people. But if you look at carefully, you will not see anything on the floor that can guide you to help you to protect yourself from the pandemic situation. So if you look at carefully, yeah, there are two grids here, but it's a 10 feet by 10 feet. So you cannot say that these are, these are good to maintain the social distance. So we gave the students the challenge to propose something for the landscape they have in the first assignment. So, for example, this is the monument that I'm just uh, giving an example from the precedent, the case study. So, this is the monument which you already saw that this is the whole landscape. But we might we might give them a chance to to uh, propose the landscape only for this uh, special area because this is the most likely to be the most dense gathering space uh, when there is an event or some uh, activities. All right, so. Then we have to define, we have to go for some terms. So what we did is that we introduced some terms and which we will frequently use that we already say that about station, about transition, about the no man's land. So these kind of things I can give you very quick but precise ideas, uh, operational definitions uh, to, to help you. When we go for the examples, we, you can relate to them that how they're doing, the, whether they are following nicely with the requirements. So what we did is that we started with with um, uh, a pathway. So that means we have to define a pathway. Last time when I said that in, in a jungle, in a forest or something, we, we don't have a pathway defined so that if people come, they don't know where to go. But in it was a requirement that you we have to define a pathway. That means even this is a kind of big open space, we have to define where the people will Follow that means which direction they will, uh, which uh, exactly the measurement something measured. So we have the six feet um, as a module. So let's say six feet wide path is the first starting point. So we call call it uh, okay. So we call it a pathway. So when we say this is a pathway, it means that you should not walk, go step outside this zone. So that means. We define them. It could be a, P, a line in the in the two D, like a brick pavement, brick paved way, or it's total brick pavement to show that this is the designated area that you should follow. Of course, if there is nobody else, like I'm the only person in the monument, I can just move freely. That's not a problem. But when it comes to like a, a very a very uh, populated event, then this these things comes into uh, terms. So. So then we we also call some of the some of the spots as stations that we saw in the indoors, for example, one chair inside one circle that we got stations. So stations, what the purpose of the stations is that if there is too many people and they're flowing following each other, now they might be sensible enough to to make and um, keep a six feet distance. And then suddenly somebody stopped to take a picture of somebody. Then where will the next guy stop? Then suddenly there is a static position, like they have to take a positions. So we we try to introduce stations at certain distances. The most for us is six feet. So we say that okay, this is a station. Uh, is each of them are sta is station is station, and then when we are moving forward, we are maintaining a six feet distance. So suddenly somebody stop, something fallen, child crying or taking a picture. The next guy must stop here. They will not come here. So this is we call the transition. So if we call this one a station, we call this one as transition. So this is a transition. So this is a very simple way to define the pathway. So we have a pathway and we got an alternate uh, station and transition. So far, so good, easy. Then comes that if there is a need for a lot of pathways, yeah, we can do that. 
And of course, we have to maintain the distance between the, the two pathways that could be the minimum is six feet. So let's say these people are moving around and these people are moving around and the, they're running parallel to each other and they can still maintain the, maintain the distance if the two pathways are six feet uh, apart. So that is one of the uh, one of that's one of the basic concern because we cannot just design a one single pathway in a big monument which has a big urban landscape. So, <clears throat> okay, yes, I'm trying to press. Okay, so what happens if somebody going this way and they got a lot of people falling and suddenly they need to change the directions? So that we feel that there must be a connecting connectors between uh, the two pathways. So the basic idea is that there's two stations because somebody must stop here is somebody stopping here. So connect the two stations and then they can change the direction and go back or something. So we call them the connections. So that we have the stations, we have the transitions and we have the connections between the two pathways. And, and then what happens to the spaces? We call it a no man's zone. That means whatever the situation is, do not step into this zone. So this is called a no man's zone. So now we got the whole checkerboard. So we have the stations inside a pathway. We had another pathway or parallel as many as we need. And we have a connectors between the two pathways where people can change the direction. Or if somebody is coming from that side, they can just skip and then bypass and then go move to the other direction but they do not step into this zone, so which is called the no man's zone. So that's the basic. And in case, in case we do not have a very big landscape and we have only two pathways, let's say, we can easily define that which one is direction, which one is coming and which one is going entrance and exit. So one can be the entrances and one can be the exits. And then of course the connectors can be both ways so that they can allow people to change the lanes from each, each directions. So that is the, the the basic operational definition that we try to use. Okay, so now we move to some cat categories. For example, we found that there can, could be four types of uh, monuments, what we call that historically preserved, and then we can call the contemporary ones. And also we found that some of them are with landscape, some of them do not have landscape. So their challenge is to design the whole new landscape for those which do not have the landscape and those which have existing landscape, they have to modify them. So I'll just give you one example from each of them, these four, and then uh, I'll just let you uh, understand that what kind of things we uh, followed. So one is that historically preserved without existing landscape. So the, the student uh, the, the student who did this uh, one is chosen, has chosen uh, this um, pyramid, this monument in Mexico. It's called the Chichen Itza. You can see that in normal conditions, people can just move around. Just a common sense makes make a just keep a distance between each other. And you can also see that there's no defined uh, landscape on the floor and the, on the floor on the ground. So it's up to you, your common sense and the, the ability to understand other people's so that um, activities. Then you can choose that how step apart you can stay from each other. So now we are we are trying to propose something responding to the COVID pandemic so that we can have a designated pathway. The student, what he did is that he just tried to follow the geometry of the pyramid and then created a concentric rings of uh, squares that is this is started as from this square and then the four uh, big staircases that we saw from this one. This can this was his kind of point of reference that he started the major paths. And also the hierarchy between these two pathways, the alternate uh, width of this one, just kind of trying to create a design uh, and put it and fit it and map it into uh, this uh, site line. So if you look at the, the legend, you can see that they're trying to follow those kind of uh, norms, the terms that we use. What he said is a transition is that transition is this one, uh, let's say the pathways. Okay, so the first way is the pathways is the lighter a brown one, and then the station is the white boxes when where they have the interaction between the two directions. So that means we can just follow this pathway, and the 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 black part is the pathway. That means we do not usually we, we if we we can step into the grass if if there's nobody, but if there's a lot of people, we have to follow the black line here transition. 
and then if somebody stops, he has to stop on this station. So this is a very simple example of how we can uh, deal with these terms. If there are not many people, we are not concerned, but in kinds of kind of event, this, uh, the celebration of some activities, we can we can have we if we have this kind of um, the guidelines uh, how to which way to move and which way to stop then it makes it easier for us. So if you if we look at the three D is if you see this is the scale so it's quite big. So you can see that actually this is quite spacious. I mean uh, it's kind of uh, widely uh, wide enough. So that means usually we don't have that much uh, gathering. So the, the distance between the two stations are quite long. But of course, if it is a smaller monument and people are gathering in smaller spaces, the distance between the stations will be much shorter. Then we move to the historical preserve, but with existing landscape. For example, uh, this a student chose this example, the tomb of Ali Barid Shah in India. And you can see that from the site plan that it got a site plan, you see that this, uh, this pavements, which probably is representing uh, these lines, so we can come back, uh, we can we can go to the tomb and then we can have the staircase here and then we have the concentric two concentric circles which are connected here. So that is a very good starting point, but this you can see that we don't have any directions like how to manage the COVID pandemic social distancing here. So that's her job is to design something. So she came up with these ideas. That means we have this station and transition for for the, for her design. She put the no man's zone and right at the center. That means she created two ways. One is uh, incoming, another is outgoing. So that means there's a particular direction to go to each of the pathways. And then uh, there are two options for her. For example, they can make six feet wide so that they can have the distance thing. But you can see that this is itself is not that wide. So let's say this is 10 feet wide. And if you put six feet, then the four feet wide um, uh, in exit uh, pathway on both sides will not be good enough in, in public spaces because people move in groups and they don't want to walk in uh, like a rail track. And so that, that's why we need to give more uh, uh, width. So what she did is that she just divided this one and put a flexi glass partition on the with the, on the stations only. That means in the 3D, she forgot to put it. But what I can say is that if this is a station, there is a flexi glass partition so that if somebody stops here and in other other directions, somebody stops here, they still can maintain the distancing because of the flexi glass partition, which could be like six feet high. So each of this one will have a temporary flexi uh, glass in between and then the directional pathway incoming and outgoing. So they come through this pathway, station, transition, sta station, transition, station, and transition. So that's how we try to interpret the existing uh, existing pathway into a more adaptable to the pandemic. And then the four corners, uh, four corners, each one of them is a resting place, kind of benches, they can see and have a pavilion. She couldn't finish the pavilions in the 3D, but the idea was that the people, if they need to rest, take rest, they can go to the corners and then they can have uh, like all the different cubicles and that can um, be social distance. Move to the contemporary uh, buildings. The first one, the first category was without the landscape. So without the landscape, this is the one example I've I found that's worth mentioning. So this is uh, one uh, it's called the Cosmos in Bulgaria, and you can see that the landscape is not very well defined. So her job was to design something that responds to the geometry of the of the. the uh, somebody's microphone is on, right? Let's see if you. I think there's yes. an issue. We try to. Yeah, maybe I'm not confident. Oh, let's figure this out. Much better. Okay. Can you, can you figure it out? Dr. Iman, your microphone is muted. Dr. Iman. 
Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, can everyone please mute the mic? Um, although this is already muted, but I'm not sure why is we can still hear. One, I think one of them is not muted. That one you need to figure out. If you, if you look at yeah, I think this is much no yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. So we just proceed with that. So this one, the name is Kosmaj uh, Spomenik in Bulgaria, and you can see that this is a contemporary uh, lands uh, monument. With but the landscape is not very it's kind of wilderness inside the forest. So she tried to propose and to get the idea from that uh, five uh, radiating. Uh, arms and then try to respond to that geometry and then create a three concentric rings. You can see the ring one, ring two, and ring three. And then she created a transition and transition, not like a very conventional square grid blocks that we said, but she tried to manage to create some kind of exciting, interesting, more interesting geometrically. For example, this ring, uh, the, the triangle, these triangles are this is the ring one. So, ring one, this is the stations. And these are the transitions. So people you know, usually they just walk through, but if somebody stops suddenly, they, the next guy has to stop here. It cannot just stop in in the mid in between these two. And then, uh, okay. All right. Sorry. And then uh, there are three other the existing. There was two greeneries. Uh, existing greeneries, you can see that the greeneries are here and the concentric two rings. One is a smaller one and another is a big one. So she tried to keep those two and then created uh, some uh, two more rings and also continue with the geometry. So the idea is that anything, the landscape you want to design must come from the geometry of the actual building. That is a kind of lesson of the, 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 the kind of the way that we try to guide them that means the landscape of the building or any urban area cannot be just random it has to respond to the existing building or the monument so this way she tried to respond to the the arms the five arms of this uh, monument so in a way she was in a way successful because she tried to manage to create all these nice transitions and the uh, stations but yet not uh, not compromising the geometry existing geometry of the building so this is a 3d you can see that the two two layers of bushes here and then the stations and the transitions and of course there is a no man's land somewhere in the middle probably she forgot to put it in here because people are likely to come to this close to the places to take pictures and then they cannot go too close to this looks like the no man's zone that means do not get too close to that uh, that uh, monument do not touch them so because touching is not very helpful for the pandemic you have to stay but stay back and and maintain those are the these are the other uh, tra transition areas and then these are the stations so this is how uh, this is the way that she is trying to you know, connect the the building the existing building geometry of the of the monument with the landscape also maintaining the the grammar of the uh, uh, the the pandemic requirements the last one is the contemporary with existing landscape for example if you choose this this student that chose the cloud gate should be the cloud gate in chicago in us so you can see that this is a, just a big piece of sculpture and you can see that the people is before pandemic uh, so you, you do not have, you have a landscape, but it's not very much well defined. So if you look at the plan, you can see that they got a landscape and they got the grids, but it doesn't say anything about the pandemic because that that time there is no pandemic. But right now we had the pandemic and we we needed to do something on the landscape so that people can maintain. They cannot just randomly uh, go and take pictures, but we just give them some directions. So in, in the in the student, they had, he had two choices. One is to respond to the circle, another is to respond to the square. So the one is that like free uh, flowing uh, um, geometry, another is a very rigid one. So for some reason, he chose the rigid one, and then he chose to get to the rectangles. And this this is how he created the pathways. The arrows actually show that which way the path, 
the the traffic the the pedestrian are moving and then actually there was the alternate stations and the, the transitions but somehow the the the, the picture the image it we couldn't uh, and we just kind of, kind of disappeared but if you look closer it probably shows there was a kind of is here you can see that there was a kind of transition of the station anyway the idea is that these are the no man's lands these are there's no man's zones so that means you cannot just come here and start walking towards this one straight no you have to follow the method so you have to follow the directions which way to go it's like a maze with without any barriers like without any walls so just a maze so you just follow the the directions on the uh, on the ground because uh, because we we saw that if we do not make the grounds, people are likely to get closer. It's like a magnet. I, I saw that in many public buildings, especially in the banks. Uh, for example, in supermarkets, uh, I saw that there are many spots that put like this is the place if you stand next to six feet far away. But I didn't find it in other buildings like the banks. Banks, they are the queues, but banks are not that kind of uh, prepared yet. For this kind of uh, pandemic situation, so they they have the like the security guard. They said, okay, six feet apart, six feet apart. But people don't like that. They they come closer because they they're tired sometimes. They're waiting in the queue. They they put one step up and they get closer. And I, I saw that I, st I stood like I observed uh, two or three cases. I went there for specific specific purpose to see how people behave. And I, I saw that well, they start with the six feet and without knowing, they come closer. And like, like after 15 minutes, they're like three feet closer, two feet closer. And then the security guard comes and said, six feet, and they're very angry. Why, why do you put me? And then you see that if the queue is like 50 people, 50 people, you have to start from the back. You can't start from the front because if you start from the front, then he, the, the next guy will go closer to the, to the one next behind him. So that is very tough to maintain. So I thought that if we just put these marks on the on the floor, this kind of pathway, though it looks like like I'm trying to force them, but it helps them. Nobody gets uh, insulted. Nobody gets like, why do you push me back? Or something like this kind of feeling. So we just look at the look at the floor, and that is the station. And look at the station and stand there. Do not put do not put yourself in the transitions. So though in in two D you can see that this is like you can walk through any 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 directions. But when somebody gets the responsibility, they will just follow the pathways. And that's not a big harm because you help others in doing that. All right, so this is the, uh, the, first, uh, the first assignment that uh, we are talking about the 2D landscape. So uh, if there are any questions, I can, I can take a one minute break to, to have any questions. Otherwise I'm talking, uh, I, have, I can start the second phase also. Dr. Uh, Amin, if you have. If anyone has uh, any questions so far? Okay, this one here um, from Zender. Uh, hi, Dr. Sarif. There's insufficient spaces for landscaping like cities in Singapore. How will the new set planning with social distancing measures applied? Oh, well, uh, right now, I do not have any idea about the Singapore uh, regulations. For example, the basic need is to get the social distancing. For example, in Malaysia, I know there's three feet. So do you know what is the social distancing requirement for Singapore? Um, I'm not sure myself. Um, I think uh, um, in Asia, we, we are still using one meter. One meter, I, okay. I think if I'm not mistaken, I, I might be wrong. Okay, yes. I mean, uh, what's the question again? Uh, what could be done in Singapore? That's what the question is? Yeah, basically, how mm -hmm. would the new set planning with social distancing measures applied? Okay. Let me see how, how it changed. Okay, so I found that, well, this kind of changes can be two ways, like one is temporary, one is permanent. So the first one they do is that using the tape, they just tape it on the floor. Like use the tapes like we, we, we do in the gym gyms or in the basketball court, change it to badminton courts, the badminton courts, change it to volleyball courts, we use the tapes. So I found that in the beginning, people are using the tapes to mark the transition and the stations. And then they use a lot of signs. That means they put a lot of signs because people are not aware, but doing something permanent takes a lot of other issues. For example, you have to go to the connect to the authority. You have to go to the city and council or corporation to change the landscape. And it talks, takes a lot of construction issues. That means you take off the top uh, layer of the 
pavement and then replace it, it will take a lot of time. So unless you are totally convinced that we need this for permanently, we need permanently, then you do not, uh, cannot do that. But I know that in Singapore, there's a lot of indoor environment, like indoor public spaces. So these the materials are quite nice. I mean, they, they, they use the, the marbles, the marble stones, the tiles. So I think the taping is the first thing they should do, that is the tapes. So that can be the very, like you can use the two different three color tapes and you have a color code and then it's easy for them to mark. Just like we mark in the traffic in the road, like the yellow zone that you cannot cross. So the cars do not cross that yellow zone. Uh, if you have a cross uh, street, like four directional uh, uh, roads uh, uh, meeting at the, at the center, then we put all of them like cross diagonal yellows to mark that this is pedestrian uh, priority. So this kind of things we already have in the road street network, the vehicular streets, but we can start to doing doing this in uh, in the public open uh, public spaces, both indoor and outdoor. Well, now you can say that, well, if I put like a supermarket lobby and I put a lot of tapes inside, how will that look? Well, in the beginning, yeah, everything looks not very cool. It looks like, well, why should it? But it depends because if we change the mindset, that means it's a requirement, it's a necessity, so people get used to it. So that's the mindset is the basic thing. So what I'm saying is that temporarily signs and the tapes are really helpful. And of course, if we have a chance to do that permanently, now next time, whenever we design a building, we will design the landscape from the very beginning using the, the pandemic requirements. So that could be the solution for this kind right. of situation. Yeah, and I think that answers also uh, Prof. Said Skanda's uh, question. It's a very long question, but uh, the gist is, uh, how would pandemic conscious design solution within the context of public spaces be a lasting solution? So it's a post pandemic yes. kind of situation. Yes. So right now I, I can see in the United States, many of them started to use the tapes. They just started to put the tapes and then put a lot of signs. I don't think many buildings will be ready to change the construction uh, pavement and, and approve it and replace it. But the new buildings, yeah, we can do that. Because sometimes I saw many buildings, like the design of a building and the, the landscape is not really nicely done. They just put like empty spaces. They don't respond to that much with the geometry of the building or any kind of references. But now we have something special. We have the pandemic. So we can go ahead from the very beginning and then start to design those kind of stations and the transitions while we start to designing a new uh, building. Okay, right. I think, uh, right. is there uh, any, any other question before we proceed? But, but anyway, uh, if I may, uh, uh, when, when we talk about tapes, uh, now it, it become popular and it becomes some sort of a, uh, an architectural elements uh, within uh, design. Um, whether or not it's temporary or whether it's permanent. So now uh, tips, right. uh, as simple as tips, can be an architectural element that uh, people or designers will, will look into uh, in the future as well. Yeah, it's kind of permanent thing. It will stay here for a long time. All right, so next, time, next we move to the second assignment, and this one is a 3D project. It's not a 2D. The last one we had is that it's a 2D project on the landscape, but this time it's a 2D. 3D project, and they had to do something. Uh, I will tell, I will explain to you that they have to take a part of the building and this redesign it, and and they have to follow the, the pandemic rules, the social distancing, and then the other methods. Okay, so let's. I, I give you a brief overview of what they're doing. So it was a assignment was to design a gatehouse. So that means we have, let's say, we have an existing uh, chapel or sacred space temple. And then they had to design a gatehouse, which in terms of 3D, they represent the, the parent, the building. And then the major thing is that they have to make sure that while they go through, they make sure that they follow those kind of um, uh, uh, requirements that, uh, uh, for example, we had four requirements inside. They have to sanitize sink options, washing hand options, mask uh, dispenser options, and the trash can. So the four requirements, four things that needed to put. So we put a kind of traffic flow. That means what we did a little bit of study. 
what do people do mostly when they come? So usually they just need a wipe and a sanitizer, either one. Washing is not really serious needed. But then there are some people who use the wipe or the sanitizer and then they wash their hands because they don't want the sanitizer to stick to their hand uh, for, for a long time. And then there are people who do not have masks. So they have to, let's say there is a requirement to enter the building with a mask and they forgot the mask. So they allow that there could be a mask dispenser. So they might be charged to pay for that or it can be free depending on the, on the, uh, on the, on the building, the authorities they want to do. So, and then, of course, if somebody got a mask and they want to renew, I mean, uh, replace the mask, we have to have a trash can, which is sanitized every half an hour or something so that the, the, they can be, uh, I mean, sterile so that the bacteria, the germ, the virus doesn't uh, spread. So the requirement was that how do you put in a sequence? So we, we, we found out that the best sequence is that we put the mask at the beginning. And then we can we put the sanitizer, then we put the washing, and then we put the trash can. And then I will explain to you there are two different things that happens. But first, I just go ahead and show you the precedent study. So this is a uh, this is a Jesuit chapel in Brazil, and this is an octagonal ecumenical center. That is a temple chapel for all religion. And this is a precedent study. So uh, this shows that a smaller miniature version of this one. And then uh, we have this uh, for this is the entrance and this is the exit. So the entrance, we have the mask, we have the sanitizing, we call it the sanitizing station, mask dispenser station, sanitizing station. And then we have the washing station and the trash can. And then while going out, we can have the same method uh, going towards uh, the exit. But before we go into the details, I just like the last one, I want to give you some of the operation operational definitions so that you can relate when I talk to talk about this term so you can relate. So what we see is that is a gatehouse, is a space. So somebody will enter through it and exit on the, to the opposite, the other side. And then when they go through this uh, this gatehouse, they sanitize themselves. That's the major purpose of this uh, space. So before that, we found that there is another thing interesting is that some people just want to go through because they think that they are sanitized. They have the mask. They don't need the sanitizer. They are washed hands there. They don't need anything to try. So we have to give something for them so that they can have an option to bypass those stations. So we call them, we call it the pathway. That means there is nothing that is stopping them without I mean, going through the building because they are sanitized. They think that they have all the precautions. And the other one, the other side we call this a use territory. That means if I want to use the sanitizing stations or the washing, uh, we have to step into this zone and not blocking while we're using that, uh, that, uh, that fixtures or that facilities. That means this is the basic zoning that we did. And then we figured that the four stations we need should be placed on the wall on the on the side. And then we have the four stations and we can put the fixtures. For example, we can put the mask dispenser, then the sanitizing stations, and then we have the washing and then the trash can. So now it's, it's very important because sometimes in, in the first year we don't teach them, but in the second year or the third year, we need to teach them about the use the territory. Because you know, for example, uh, if I occupy a table or a chair, it's not that the area of the furniture that I use, I use a kind of invisible space around that furniture that belongs to me. Because if somebody steps into that zone, I don't feel comfortable because I want to push the chair to get up or I have to move or move my feet or hand to reach for something. So that means there is an invisible uh, demarcation of a space around the furniture that we call the use territory. So for this one, for the sanitizing stations or washing station, we call this part is an use territory. So each one that each one of them we put, we ask them to put the flexi classes. For example, if this guy stops into this use territory to use the mass dispenser, the other guy comes here. If there is no partition between these two, then we do not maintain the social distancing. So we have to put a flexi glass in between these two zones. 
If this space is big enough, that means people can go inside and then still use them, then the flexi glass remains until this point. They don't have to go until this point. So this becomes a use territory. Once somebody is stepping in, that means this guy is not blocking these guys. So some other people, they can just continue here. But then how about how to stop here? This is the pathway. If somebody goes here and suddenly thinks, no, I want to wash my hands, then he stops here. And then how do the other people respond? So it, have, it will go for the same method that we had uh, before. So we have to alternate between a station and a transition, like the pathway we had a station and a transition. So, but this one do not have a specific station and transition. If this one, somebody stops, stops here, then this becomes a station, this becomes a transition. The other guy uh, goes, uh, skips one of these. If some guy is stopping here, then the next guy is stopping here. And this is the this is the way that total the, the the person who wants to go straight down. And then if they need to go to use the fixtures, they have to step in. And if they step in, then if somebody is here, then the other people are not coming to this point. They're maintaining that distance. So this is kind of uh, kind of common sense that we have to use. Of course, in the beginning there will be kind of confusion where to stop and what to do. And people will smile at each other, laugh at each other. And they will try to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it happens. But gradually, gradually, uh, we will get used to these kind of situations. And also, the gatehouse also demanded that we can, we do not have a single entrance and the exit. So we can just replicate, duplicate this thing and then make it one of them like entrance and one of the exit. So this is the operational definition of the whole situation. Now we will go for the uh, examples. So we have selected several. Um, uh, temples from different religion, uh, and then we try to encourage them to, to how to use the method of uh, different methods of how to use uh, the, the 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 methods of social distancing inside that guardhouse gatehouse. So usually, whatever the charge the temple is, it doesn't matter because this one is really it's a secular issue. We have to sanitize, and we do not. So basically, a basic a challenge for them was to how to design the three D. Uh, of the temple. So the two exercise, the two things parallel is that they've designed the 3D for the 3D exercise and then they solve the, solve the functions inside uh, the gatehouse. So we choose a different kind of uh, temples like mosques, the Chinese temples, the Christian churches, Hindu, Buddhist, Hindu, Baha'i, uh, and also the ecumenical means the multi faith uh, interfaith uh, chapels. So let's start with some of the examples, one from each probably. The first one who did this one is uh, Yasam, Yasam Kent Mosque at Turkey. And you can see that the building, though this is a 3D simulation, but you can see that there is a landscape, of course, but we don't have a sanitizing station that we are trying for. So the student had come up with an idea of a miniature reflection of this church and then create the gatehouse here, and then they will have an exit and an entrance. So if you look at the 3D, so what he did is not perfect, but he tried to create the pathway. The pathway is this one with the with the transition and the stations and then the use territory on the right hand side. And probably he made a mistake. He has to put the four different fixtures here, the mask dispenser here, sanitizer and the washing and the trash can. And also, since this is a mosque, he also created an ablution space on both sides so that if people, somebody wants to use the ablution area, they can also do that before they move on to the stations. Uh, also, this is a mistake. They have to put this one here and the entrance here. This door is a mistake. So you can see that the people who do not need any of this, they can just go straight ahead or somebody needs to stop here. They move to that zone that we call the use territory and they can use this one and then wait until then this guy has moved and this guy stopped they can come into this one. So this is just like a traffic um, traffic uh, road uh, uh, sign, uh, road, uh, what we call the uh, traffic, not the traffic signals, but traffic um, uh, rules that we follow when we have to yield somebody, when we turn right or left. So we see the other, other people and then we decide. So exactly the same thing is happening here. Instead of vehicular, we just use the pedestrian as the mode of uh, traffic. All right, the second one, we have the mosque, the Madrasa of Sultan Hassan, Egypt. So this is a very big mosque and then the, 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 the gatehouse was really small, so you couldn't put them together. But the idea was uh, good. 
So what he did is that he found that we have, uh, we, he tried to create a loop here instead of a series, like a straight uh, line. So he, uh, the entrance is here, the exit is here. So instead of, uh, he said that since this is a quite busy area, so if we have only one set of this, it will be tough to maintain. So he created four uh, different sets of the whole system. So and sanitizing stations, washing area, mask dispenser, should be mass dispenser and the trash can. And he put some alternative methods. So he put some options so that if somebody needs the whole set, he can use the whole set or if they can use separately, like I only want to use the sanitizer and go back, so they can use them. So this kind of uh, things, and, and then would they create this loop around and then go down, uh, go to the exit and also create a courtyard because it's also said that if you keep some outdoor open, not very indoor, then it is easier for the wind flow and other things can take the germs off a little bit, make it more easier. So outdoor is usually better than indoor. So the courtyard kind of trying to help with that. All right, so third one uh, we find uh, is a, is a uh, Chinese temple, the so Nanjing Wanjing Garden Chapel in China. It's a wooden structure, and you can see that this is the miniature version of that gatehouse that responds to the actual building. And this one, uh, let, let's take a look at this one. So she tried to uh, create a kind of um, uh, kind of arrangements, which is also kind of a loop instead of a straight way. So in a way, responding to that existing pathway. So she's trying to create a loop here, and then kind of loop here. And then this is the entrance and this is the exit. So what she did is that is open and then you can see that the station, transition station, transition alternate. And at some points you have the use territory. There's the sanitizing station, there's the washing area, and then there's the trash can at the corner. So uh, once somebody is inside this use, use territory, the, the, she doesn't block the other people to bypass. So that's the main purpose. Getting to the use territory means that I'm using it, but I'm not blocking the other people to pass. So that's how this thing uh, goes. She also has some janitors room and also storage areas, which is a byproduct product of the design. And there's a model that uh, she made with the uh, wood, and then also the 3D uh, 3D uh, SketchUp model for this one. So they try to give the impression of a model as well through the model. The fourth one is the Christian temple, it's the university, uh, sorry, university temple, uh, Maria Reina de la Paz. So this is, uh, this you can see that she tried to create a miniature version of this one and then try to solve this uh, uh, gatehouse. So if you see uh, the closely, so she, she, this time, this one, she argued that the exit, we don't need that kind of sanitation, they're just moving out. So we just let them go. So not much here. So the entrance is well equipped, but the exit is just a trash can. Well, I I, I kind of agree to that point. So maybe they need they don't need that kind of stopping because people are in a rush while the exit is just a big queue. People will kind of uh, create uh, right. Okay. So from here you can see that this is trying to use the geometry to its fullest extent and using the geometric lines uh, to to create. Uh, that functional requirements, but yet creating the 3D image and also to be nice experience while going through this building. But the functional functional requirements are fulfilled mask dispenser, sanitizing, washing with a dryer, and then uh, storage, and then the trash can, and exit only the trash can. And you can see the 3D right here. So you can see that the flexi glass that separates two people, two person inside the use territory and also you can see that the line alternately placed means that these are the stations and the transitions that we talked about the alternate uh, spaces between the two persons that can if there's somebody stops where the next one will stop all right so the next one i'm going through quickly i have two or three more the san jose maria escriva charge in mexico so this is the two triangles that was to her, it was a very prominent feature. So she, she tried to replicate the two triangles in her gatehouse. And if you look closely, this is the model actually. 
so you can see that this one, she really chose the straight path that we showed in our operational definition. So it's a straight path. If you look at the 3D, probably it's easier. So let's uh, this is the entrance. So once we while we enter this one, we can have the sanitizing, the washing, and all the other fixtures. So if we step into this one, this is the use territory, and then we have the passage, the, the pathway bypass if we do not use them. The exit is the exact uh, opposite of that one. And then trying to create these alternate lines means that the station and the transition are marked uh, here. Another example, <clears throat> the Hindu temple, Prambanan temple in Indonesia. And then this is, uh, of course, you can see that we have uh, this uh, landscape, but of course we don't have the gatehouse, so we don't have the sanitizing. So she proposed something close to uh, related to that design of the temple itself. So she chose the cross uh, shape and then put the fixtures on this square and then create the passes, the pathway uninterrupted bypass. So you can easily see that in the plan, maintaining the transition. Uh, and the stations alternating and then go into the use territory and then put the fixtures for the three points, uh, three look, three consecutive uh, space, uh, spaces that are like the, the three uh, fixtures, the facilities. Another one is the Baha'i temple at Lotus Temple in India. And it's a very nice temple. Uh, and then the landscape is very much detailed. But of course, we are planning for a gatehouse. And then this is the, the, the result that it came up with. The Baha'i got nine leaves. Nine is a very dominating number for them. So he chose the plan of the Baha'i temple to represent into an elevation. And then we got the nine uh, edge, a nine pointed star as a, a 3D. Of course, the, the inside was not that kind of uh, exciting. The in inside was very simple. In, in the beginning, he, he got, we went for a mezzanine, the balcony, for a resting place, but later, some reasons, he, he tried to avoid them, probably because of the complexity of the structure. But it's basically very simple. I, I mean, he, he missed out with the, with the, with the, uh, the rendering. So basically, it's like coming inside this way and bypass this one. Or if you wait, want to use the use territory, then we have to step inside this rectangle and use the facilities here. So very simple, but very effective. And then we moved on, on to the ecumenical chapels. That means the multi-faith interfaith chapels is for all religions. So basically, it's a nice, it's just a space where you know, people can fit from any, any religion and focus on their religion. So this is a kind of basement, not basement, like a submerged into the earth. And it's, it's, it's a ramp that is used to approach to access this building. So the ramp goes this way and connects to this one. So he, he also tried to respond to the geometry and try to create something underneath the ground as well for the gatehouse. So the gatehouse is, is, is so for example, the, the chapel is uh, submerged merged into the uh, sunken into the ground. And then his proposal was the gatehouse also will have a sunken part. So he uses used the stairs and the steps to go to that one, and this is a station and transition, though I argue that is the width is not enough, so we could have a use territory that means double of the width. But anyway, the idea, I liked it. And of course, for the ADA, like the wheelchair options, they say that he argued that since uh, this is not enough space for the ramps, because ramps is like one to 12 feet for a wheelchair, so we cannot have this length. So wheelchair options is not very frequent, so they can just use this exit method. They can just follow this one. Uh, so they can have special treatment for sanitizing. So I agree kind of uh, not to make it too complex. So you, the, the people, the irregular uh, visitors, they can just go through these steps and sanitize and go up and then follow the ramp to go inside. And then exit is pretty simple because he also argued that we don't need those kind of sanitizing at the exit before in a rush. So they can just go around and exit from this way. All right, so there's a 3D. Another ecumenical chapel, another the Cadet Cathedral. The Cadet Cathedral is all by probably is US Air Force, but it's a ecumenical for multi faith. And this the challenge was that this temple is actually uh, the, 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 the prayer hall is actually underneath uh, in the basement. So he also proposed 
uh, kind of smaller version of this one, but the activities was underneath. That means we have to go directly under uh, one floor down and then follow the tunnel to enter to the basement. So the 3D, this is a 3D from the first level, but when we move to the second level, we can see that once we enter this door, we enter this door, to this door, and then turn right, to enter this door and turn right to get the staircase. The pathway is this directly. If you look at this one, you can see that we can take the stairs down and then go path through the pathway. But if we want to use these facilities, then we have to use territory separated by the flexi glass, which I think he forgot to put it here. So the flexi glass is right here, and the separate the washing area, sanitizing the mass dispenser, etc. One janitor room underneath the staircase also proposed. And then when they come back, they come the other way, and then they use these facilities and then they can take the staircase and go out. So then go out this way. It kind of uh, uh, this way. And this one, I, I actually wanted to delete this one because uh, this is really, we, uh, we gave them too much freedom. Uh, this is a Roman pantheon. <laughs> Roman pantheon is a conserved project. So we, it's not allowed to create any building inside the territory. So what he proposed is that I'll create a smaller version of pantheon and then I create a tunnel. And then I asked that how you how do you uh, let people in? And he proposed an escalator. I don't think this is uh, this is will be allowed in the main building. But I like the idea. I mean, it's some in some point, if they allow this kind of structures in future, then the idea looks great because he also followed the same method like the ecumenical chapel we had before. So that means something is submerged, then we use the submerged sunken facilities. So and he also proposed that, okay, this is just like a miniature version of this portico. And then actually we go down and through the tunnel, we go to the Pantheon and then we have all the pathways. And then we have the use territories with the sanitizing stations, the mass stations and the washing stations. And then we can just follow the entry and the exit. And in a way, this is good. So of course we cannot violate. So we just gave him a little bit of freedom since it's a freshman year. So just do not try to block the creativity. <laughs> so that was one. And the final one, I, I just want to like the honorable mention. Uh, this is a chapel, it's called, what is the chapel called? The Church of the Verified Restituta. So she uh, planned for a uh, drive-in, drive-through uh, sanitizing station. So it's not just uh, for the, because the, the parking, in other cases, the, there was a parking lot and usually people park their car and then go through the gatehouse so they can walk. But this one, the parking is underneath the building. So that means they cannot have the options to have a gatehouse. They have to use a pedestrian. So she's, she's proposed a drive-through uh, gatehouse, which, which they can fit the, a car, usually one car at a time. And then of course they put two so that the one on the driving seat and another the passenger seat, they can use the facility at the same time. Of course they can go down and then use the facilities, but they can also um, be using them in, in, while inside the car. So I think that's a good idea to start with. So uh, I didn't discourage that one. So they still have the sanitizing stations, the washing and the uh, stress can and the storage for the mask. Everything is the same and also proposed four sides because there can be four possibilities, the driver, the passenger in the front seat and the two back seat uh, users, they can always use at the same time the, all the facilities. So four on, the, on each one, so entrance and the exit. Right, I think I have come to the end of the presentation. So just go back and put the cover page and take a little break while I can ask a lot of questions. I answered the, uh, maybe some questions coming from the, so that is um, basically the end of the presentations, Dr. Ayman. Okay, thank okay. you, Dr. Sarif. Thank you very much. Uh, for your, everyone's information as well, um, we have invited um, this, um, this session uh, to other institutions. Um, I know that there are uh, students from ITB, Indonesia, um, which we have invited Dr. Rob as the, the lecturer from there. And we have also invited uh, students from Kingdom University of uh, Kingdom of Bahrain and also Selfakan University of Thailand. I'm not sure whether uh, uh, the students are here. Um, yeah, but um, 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Sarif, again for, for the um, session. Uh, I think it's, it's interesting in a way that uh, mm. now I have a different perspective in terms of uh, how the, uh, people design uh, pandemic spaces, if I, if I may, using that term. Um, mm. It is very technical in one sense, but it can also be very beautiful and, and aesthetically pleasing in, in the other sense. Um, right. which um, I think your students and, and you yourself have, have uh, uh, done or, or produced such wonderful uh, projects. Um, we have uh, some questions from the floor. Um, if you uh, have any questions, feel free to put them in chat. Uh, we will, uh, you can also open your mic and be well. So yes. if I may take some of the questions, um, uh, there's one from Dr. Robbie. He said that okay. um, uh, uh, in some point of your uh, in uh, on your lecture, um, you mentioned uh, uh, um, some topics in terms of um, uh, the public spaces. Uh, he was wondering whether um, these are related to US lead or an, any green requirements oh, uh, for yes. open public spaces. Yeah, I got the I got I saw the question. Yes, the point is that. Uh, there is a concern with those environmentally and sustainability uh, related organizations, but right now they're not active about this one. They, they just think that the, the in, in architectural terms, it is still early to respond to uh, this one. That's why there is no regulations yet in terms of those uh, lead and other things. But I think the 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 kind of uh, what we call the uh, kind of uh, uh, how to say it, like like the like knowledge like people are being aware of the situation. So we're in the transition stage. We are not aware of this everything. So it is unlikely that it's just like a vaccine. It has to be tested first. So the, anything regulations by the lead, they need a lot of steps to get a, a kind of standardized. So probably they might be working, but there's no official nothing yet. Okay, thank you for that. Um, there's another uh, question from Dr. Robbie as well. Like um, now uh, we, uh, we're talking about the role. Uh, currently um, uh, we are managing the spaces. So uh, what's the role of architect, interior design or, or, or building management? Uh, management? Uh, we, we, which are we in, uh, uh, into now? Or are we still designers of uh, spaces? Well, uh, as I say, right now, there are two methods. One is that adapt the existing building to the pandemic. Or the second one is that when we design the new building, should we respond to the pandemic or not? Well, this is a very complicated question. not very easy to answer. Because previously, when we designed a building, we did not put pandemic as a kind of constraints. We have all those design principles. We, we try to follow rhythm, balance, and emphasis, this kind of terms that we traditionally use to design a space or a form. But we did never thought about from medical. But you know that these things comes. For example, fire regulations. Fire regulations is not an architectural term, but this is a very important. So that's why we cannot design a staircase or an elevator, whatever we want to because we have to go through a department of fire safety to approve that this design is following the fire regulations. So I'm sure that there will be a, a kind of uh, you know, organ, I mean, uh, that's kind of uh, like in term, like uh, administrative uh, methods so that they will say that, well, do we have the COVID regulations? So I'll check whether your design has been following the COVID regulations or not soon to come i'm sure that will soon happen very soon so when we design as an architect we cannot just ignore the fact that the pandemic is there and it's here to stay so we have to go through that kind of regulation just we cannot just just like we cannot use any dimensions for an elevator any size of a staircase we cannot do that because there are regulations like firewall how thick the wall would be and how much many hours it will protect from fire so these are the not design related it's it's like a reality related that means you have to follow through this uh, otherwise your building do not get the approval so i'm sure that it will happen uh, in in future very soon that it has to follow the pandemic covid uh, regulations okay uh, there's another one from uh, ranju krishnan um, he was uh, asking about public spaces and parks 
what are the architectural improvements that will make green spaces serve as the lung of the urban realm? Do we need a new typology of green spaces now? Well, I, I think it is too early to answer this one because we are still in the very early stages of pandemic. But as we know that the outer and outdoor spaces are better than indoor spaces, that's what they, they, they say right now. So in terms of green spaces, the outdoor it is less likely to be affected with the pandemic than like the indoor spaces. So I still feel that there is no real serious urgency to change the whole atmosphere of the landscape of outdoor greeneries because they are still the lungs. So we don't have to really uh, worry about that one. But I think that we have to skip some touches, like we have to design some pavements and the connector and connecting pathways. We cannot just leave it, but we have to follow some of the rules in case there are dense gathering in any public spaces that can happen. So we still follow the basic rule of uh, greenery. That means in terms of requirement, how much greenery should be there in the person terms of percentage, for example, I, I know that in in housings we have to have 10% of the uh, actual green in the total area to dedicate it totally for green so i think those rules uh, those rules still apply but then we have to do something in terms of uh, controlling the traffic the pedestrian so i think this is will be very soon a very big requirement we cannot design just a green space just in terms of how many uh, trees are, I mean, how many percentage of greeners there or something like that. We have to go for the design of the landscape, also some rules and regulations. Okay, there's uh, another question from Fran uh, from the Institute of Technology Bandung, a student. So, uh, again, talking about temporary and permanent. So, um, uh, should should th this design be permanent thing or temporary one again? Okay, yes. I think we, we talked about it earlier. The, the thing is that Right now, we are not sure about the COVID, how long it will stay. So if we do something very right now, like we try to change the buildings, the landscape, and then put those stations and transitions and say that, well, we are trying to redesign the urban landscape, uh, 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 the pavements and such. Maybe it's too early to do that. So what I suggest most of the, since this is a freshman uh, example, so they're trying to uh, run a lot of things, ranges, they're trying to explore a lot. But in terms of reality, I don't think uh, permanent changes could be done right now because we still don't know a lot of this stuff. So those, I say, they're using the science or sign signages or using the tapes on the floor, that could be the first thing we should start to do that because I saw in, in real life, People are struggling to maintain those kind of social distances. So because there's nothing on the floor. So maybe we start with a temporary, maybe a few years later, we'll go for permanent. The new buildings probably will have uh, to follow that guideline. That means in landscape, I mean, whatever you have uh, in the ground, you have to have some patterns that can show how the people, the pedestrian traffic will move. So it could be a mandatory regulatory, but right now I don't think it will happen in, in the currently like two or three years time. Okay, I think this also uh, answers Kishin Wong's uh, question on temporary. Um, there's one from Nuris. Uh, she's second year in, in UTM. So why does the exit require the mass sanitizing and washing stations? And why isn't there a temperature check in most of these projects? Right. So uh, what we found out is that the temper temperature check usually goes at the, at the entrance of the building itself, the doorways. It doesn't go at the uh, state. The people who check the temperature doesn't do that on the outside on the landscape. So that's why we skip that out. There's a little study that says that okay, people usually when they enter the the door, that means one the indoor and outdoor is separates. That's the main door. Let's say there is the guy because this guy needs to be protected as well. So he or she they they stay there at the at the entrance point, and then everyone should have to go through. Of course, there's another issue that while we move from the guard gatehouse to the building, I also thought I, I also we also found that they should be designing the pathway as well because let's say the guy who's temperature checking takes a little while, then the, there will be queue. So they have to maintain that Q2 during the whole uh, pathway for connecting from the, the gatehouse to the main door. But anyway, the first question answer is that, well, from our study, we found that the guy who takes the temperature should be 
on inside the building, just at the main gate, not at the gatehouse. And number two is that why they will need the mask uh, sanitizer at the exit, right? Oh, the question is why they will need or why they will not need. Can you can you repeat the question? Uh, uh, why does it uh, require that mask sanitizing and washing station? Or what All does right. it need? Yes. Yeah? Yes, uh, as I mentioned, that some students they argue that there is no need because I can just leave because this is a hurry. But again, we also did an observation study, and I I I asked uh, five students to track what they do while they exit, like let's a supermarket. So that was a very interesting finding. They see that those people, yeah, they just exit, but when they enter the car. They wash their hands and they sanitize and they do all of stuff before uh, taking the wheel, the driving wheel. So that means some of them are more concerned that even though we are going out, we have to go and clean ourselves before we move to the car because the car is the family car. So people, the, the family members, they're very close to each other. So let's say two or three of them were waiting inside the car and this guy is coming out and he will join them right now inside the car. So he needs to do something sanitizing before he he starts the driving the car. So this is, of course, this is all the preliminary stages. We are doing a lot of studies. We can find, come up with them. So why not we just give them the optional option to sanitize them even when they exit? We have the we have the option to bypass. That means if somebody doesn't need, they can just bypass. They don't enter the use territory. But if somebody needs to uh, use them, they just step into the use territory, uh, and then they can uh, they can just uh, skip. Uh, I mean, uh, they can just uh, use the facilities. For example, as I said here, is that yes, if I do want to exit here, I don't want to use the facilities. I can just still bypass because somebody is using the step into the use territory, and they're not blocking this guy. So it depends on the personal uh, preferences for each each person. Uh, how to whether to use those facilities or not. Okay, um, th there's another one from uh, Amir Hakim, a PhD student in UTM. So he was wondering whether um, if you do the get house, it will lead, lead to a long queue at the back. So would right. it be functional if you just translate the uh, pathway idea early on that you yes. mentioned? Well, what we did is that we did not go for like serious study on how many people are expected on that particular since it's a freshman they didn't have that op op option to do that but yeah this is a good question because uh, we have to make sure that we have enough space uh, for the long queue for example just put this one so let's say we're entering here this is a sidewalk this is the parking zone this is the parking so let's say there is a sidewalk that connects. So people are parking and then coming slowly, walking through. So what we we try to uh, give them the idea that whether when this is a sidewalk, there will be a station and transition, station and transition, station and transition, even in the sidewalk, not only inside the gatehouse. Of course, they did they couldn't do it uh, because of time limitation. We just gave him one week for this one. So what the propose is that we we have to have a sidewalk which also have a queuing facilities that is a six feet distance between this transition and that one just like just like the one we had in the monuments for example in this monument so this is the standard sidewalk even in the parking so that means in every parking there will be an alternate of six feet distances so that well somebody's park uh, here and then he sees he see that. He sees that there is a long queue. He just just join the joins the queue, and that's all. For example, there is a lot of cars, and then start people. The one is watching here. Then they start queuing up here, and then this goes all the way. Depends on how many the uh, the capacity of the parking. Probably it will depend on the capacity of the parking, or how many people you allow to enter the building. But this is the thing that you we have to go focus later on right now probably it was not the right time for them because they are still doing the basic one but this is a good question actually we have to do a lot of things in future regarding this problem yeah good question okay uh, a question from um there's a few more questions if that is okay um can, can we design yes. to, yeah from, from nicolim can we design to force people to follow the distancing and sanitizing rules okay 
So as I said, right now, people are using security guards to maintain the social distancing. I saw that the security, I saw in some banks, because I, I went there with my students just to observe. I then said, come here and park your car and just take a look what they're doing, the queuing up. I went to the driving license uh, office where the public facilities, people queue up huge queue outside the building because license, getting the license, there's a lot of people and then they cannot just sit inside the lobby. So they have to queue up outside and I saw that they are queuing up. And then as I, as I say that people tend to come closer if there is no indication on the mark. Six feet, they initially maintain and gradually I saw that they come closer. Two feet, three feet, two feet, they come closer. Then the security cup comes. I saw in one instance, the security guard got a six feet uh, wooden stick in his hand. And he just said that, okay, this is your distance. So maintain the distance. They put the six-feet bar inside the two. So right now, it is kind of forcing. It is a forced thing. But I believe that when people get aware, right now, we can put the signage as well. That means maintain six-feet distance. We can put the spots on. The... Right now, you have to do a little bit forcing, I guess, because we are not used to that situation right now. We are just learning. But I believe, just like the way we drive, like let's say 50, 70 years ago, driving was not that much precise. We didn't have this kind of traffic rules and regulations. People come in the cross uh, crossroad and they just look at other side and then try to go before the other one because there was probably no rules. But then we got a lots and lots of rules and gradually we get used to it. So I believe that those kind of things that we are, we just try to introduce here, yeah, it might change, it might evolution, it have it go through evolution, but there will be some rules that after like, let's say 10 years or so, if the pandemic is still there, we are getting used to, we've got, we will get used to those. So right now we are forced. Yes, I, I agree, forced. We need to force them. Okay, uh, a short question on, are we going to start reducing uh, confined spaces for our future, future coach? This is from Jeffrey from ETM. Okay, confined space. Do you mean if you mean indoors? Then yeah, uh, like small spaces. Yeah. Yeah. If it is the indoors, then I'll say that yes, we have to do that because the studies right now says that indoor is more likely to spread uh, germs uh, uh, more than uh, if you have outdoor. So I guess there will be some kind of outdoor waiting spaces in future, more focus on outdoor spaces rather than indoor air conditioned thing, because air, condi air conditioning is a, a bad thing. That's what the COVID uh, researchers say, that because it circulates the, circulates the same air sometimes inside. So that means the germs are moving inside the space for a long time. There's a more chance. So why not we just try to go for introducing some outdoor spaces and then make it more uh, like not too much dependent on the air conditioned spaces. So that could be one method in future. We would like to see that each building has more dedicated spaces for outdoor uh, waiting areas or public spaces. I'm not sure what could could work like that. Right now we are too much getting too much depending depending on the air conditions. So that is that is one lesson that we might have to take in the future to change us, modify ourselves. And it's also good for the sustainability issues, environmental issues, because too much dependency on air conditions also we we emit the 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 gases that is not very helpful for the climate. So maybe it's, it's a disguise good thing in disguise. Um, there, that's one comment from that is it uh, regarding some of your um, you mentioned earlier as well, like uh, he sees that the future, uh, basically, you have to submit the design to the uh, authority in regards to the pandemic or uh, this kind of issues that that's his comment. But uh, there's a, a question from uh, one Harith. He says that um, yeah, this is... does passive design or active design. Uh, um, can be used or, or sh should be used uh, for the pandemic and why? Okay, the passive design is that using the building elements to 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 work for the environmental issues like the heat, 
and the wind, I mean, airflow, ventilation, cross ventilation, natural light. These are the passive design elements. That means not too much depending on artificial lighting, not too much depending on the air conditioning. Of course, we are talking about this for a long time. Nobody cares about it because we we have the steel, we have the glass, we try to show off the buildings and we make it all air conditions, everything. We almost forgot that the necessity of passive design. So let's say once we get used to the elevators, who will walk the stairs? Nobody will walk the stairs. But we know that walking up the stairs is good for health. No one will do that. So passive design, of course, this is a major method all through the history of architecture. They always say that, okay, use the sun shading, use the natural cross ventilation, use all the other methods that the building itself helps you to, to, to sustain some energy. Do not use too much energy because we will run out of energy at some point or we will just. So I think COVID is just giving us some signals. That means please for follow basic norms, just follow passive design rules. Because if there's a cross ventilation, the environment is much better, much likely to say that 70% chance to less to infect uh, for infection if there is a cross ventilation to a space that is taking the. So why not? Why not we use that? We, I think we, we have to force, enforce more passive design elements in architecture in future. Yeah, and, and uh, I think this will be the last question from, uh, from the floor from Amar. Okay. So he he was commenting and asking a question at the same time, like, uh, is it better for making a movable pot that can tour around the monuments? So uh, he referenced it to the Heathrow Airport, parking pots. I think uh, the, the question will also relate in terms of the, all these um, stations that, that students design, are they temporary or are they uh, permanent? That's that's very interesting. Like pot, I didn't, I never thought about this pot thing. But I think the pot thing works well for this one. The this was a temporary uh, gatehouse. That means it's made of wood, and it can be removed to any place because we don't ha want to hurt the existing architecture. Because we still think that COVID is temporary, it's staying here for a few years. But if it is not the case, then we may have to rethink about the the this kind of sanitizing stations and I think the pot is will be very helpful. So maybe the sizes will shrink a little bit. We cannot go for a certain size because this, since this is a movable stuff. So I think we will see some movable sanitizing stations like a, in, in on a pod that is very likely to happen. I think that's a great idea. I, I think, yeah, this is a good possibility. Of course, there will be a lot of things that will improve. This is just the beginning. Okay, uh, I think that's that would be all about it in terms of the questions. So uh, thirty eleven uh, forty five Malaysia time. And I think we sh uh, should end our session here, if that is okay with everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Dr. Tarif for for the wonderful lecture and uh, uh, wonderful insights and, and explanation on some of the students' work. Again, I will say that. Um, it changes uh, my, my perception on a pandemic or emergency uh, design, uh, if I may. And uh, it can be technical. It can be really uh, um, beautiful at the same time. And this also uh, questions in terms of uh, is designing, uh, are, are we architects uh, uh, as a special designer? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, do, do we have a role in, in reducing the pandemic? Uh, because pandemic, this pandemic uh, relates uh, uh, heavily on special design, uh, uh, fatal requirements. Uh, so, so the question is whether we uh, are the ones who will uh, reduce or, uh, or or will make the pandemic lesser or make the the world even better. So again, right. yes, yeah, thank you for uh, everyone, especially from the other universities, uh, IT uh, from Indonesia. Um, which uh, was uh, the lecture will be uh, from Dr. Robbie, okay. and also from the Kingdom University of Bahrain, if, if there is there are students from, from there, and Silpakon University from Thailand as well. So we appreciate you, you coming to, to this event, and hopefully we, we should have this kind of session again um, with uh, other speakers and other universities as well. Um, on, my part, yes. on my part, I want to really thank you for giving me the chance because 
I actually I, I told Doctor Naim I'm under. It will be like half an hour presentation, but I think I went to one and a half hour. That's a lot. <laughs> I don't yeah, know that's how good. That's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> because there, so there's a lot of questions there. Of questions and there's a lot of things uh, I realized that when I was going to explain that. Wow, there's a lot of things I can add to that. One. So it's really interesting. So I really thank uh, UTM and and uh, School of Architecture for giving me the chance. I, I'd like to, if there is a chance, there's a 223 participants. I can't believe it. I mean, there's a lot of students here. So I just want to give you one one good like five seconds time. Can you just turn your video on? I want to see who I talk to. That will give me a lot of energy. So if you do not mind, just keep your video open just for 15 seconds or something. And I want to see your face. Just want to see that how the, what are the people that I talk to? Because otherwise, it looks like I'm I'm against the wall and talking about <laughs> nothing. So this is this is very interesting. This is a new pandemic. So you just open your your, your video on and just keep it like 15, 20 seconds even or 30 seconds. Ah, Doctor Rashid, Doctor Cairo, you see that? I I would have missed you if you <laughs> didn't didn't have opened the. So you see that? I really like to see the faces. Because architecture is really about the interaction. That means if I don't see the reaction of of the people that they're here, here very difficult to talk. It looks like, uh, do uh, am I really understanding? I mean, am I really saying something that is they're accepting, or they're just making uh, fun of me or something? They don't like. So it's really interesting. So you see that I feel very encouraged to see all your faces. This is really. <laughs> It's really nice. I worked in UTM for eight years and 2018, 2010 to 2018. And I have a lot of interaction with students. And that was really, really a good experience for us. And now I can see the students from Malaysia, from Indonesia, and they say that is from Thailand as well. And so this is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. I already saw around more than 100 people already. Since I know some of you are still opening the videos, just give me one chance to take a look at it. I took a look at you, and then you we will feel that we are connected. I always always try to say that in my class, the Zoom classes. I said in the beginning, please let me show you, see your faces. Just let, maybe for half an half a minute or so, and I give, give you something, and then at the concluding sessions, then we still become connected. All right, thank you very much. Dr. Ayman, I think I got my inspiration.